Hi guys, welcome to my video on the Akai MPC-1. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 12 bar slow blues jam track, which includes a drum track, bass guitar track, and organ track. We're going to do it all with the Akai MPC-1. This video is for absolute beginners, as I was probably about a month ago. And the impetus for this video was the fact I could not find a beginner's video that would take you by the hand and teach you how to make some noise with this box. So that is exactly why I'm making this video. So with that said, here we go. In this first part, I'm going to show you how to navigate the hard drive and the SD card. And you may ask, why in the world would you need to do that? It's actually not the easiest in the world, and it's not intuitive. So uh, with that said, let's turn, let's power up the Akai. There's a power button here on the left back of this. I'm not going to go over the, the inputs on the back because they're so ridiculously easy. I just have, I have it plugged in, the power cord plugged in. Uh, on the right, or on the right here, there's a left and main out. And I have that go into a little... JBL Charge 4 speaker, just mono out. There's a button, there's a little knob here that you can control the volume with, uh, and so that's really straightforward as well. On the front of it, there's only two things. There's an SD card slot, and there's a headphone, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So yeah, that's about all there is to it. Now, let's get something going. So as you see, we just started up, it comes to this kind of the select project screen. And you have a choice. You can do an empty project here. You could also do an empty project here. They're both the same. You can see that there's some there's some project files that I have in here. And you can hit this little button. And by the way, this is a touch pad. Uh, so you can, that's how you, there's no mouse or anything that you need to hook up to this. And I give it about a B minus, C plus. It's not perfect. I could tell when I've, put it in the keyboard tract, in the organ tract, or in the bass tract. It's not perfect, uh, but it works. I mean, it's okay. Um, so for us, let's just go to a new project, and we'll hit this empty right here. And that's going to take us to what I call home base. So you have to remember how to get to home base, because I might be in some weird place like this, and you go, where am I? Go to this main button right here, and that'll take you to home base. So in order to show you around the SD card and the hard drive, let's make a file. Uh, so specifically, let's make a project, our first project file. And so the project file is where you're going to be doing all the work. Project file will contain sequences, usually just one sequence. Uh, but for some reason, if you want more sequences, that's, you could do that as well. Uh, for my simple project, I just need a main sequence here. Sequence contains tracks, so this is where we'll make a, a drum track, a bass guitar track, and a keyboard track right down here. So the tracks attach to the sequence. The tracks don't do anything by themselves. You have to assign programs to the tracks, and that's exactly what we're going to do. But for starters, let's save our first project. So click Untitled. And that'll take you to this weird kind of in-between menu. Uh, and there's, there's some options here. You don't see the SD card or the hard drive, which is a little weird. But if you click Save or Save As, either one, that'll take you to, finally, the SD, uh, the SD card you can see there. And there's the internal hard drive. Now, all of the videos I've, I've watched online say, don't use the internal hard drive. There's not that much space on it. Always get an SD card. It's a U3. It's a fast SD card. Um, I'll Maybe I'll float a picture of it up above this and show you what mine looks like. Um, so this is where we're going to be saving. And I want to make a new folder. But let me just navigate the card. So here are the, the folders that are in the SD card. And by turning this handy little wheel here, we can scroll through the projects that I've made so far. Okay, um, I mean, you can click on them as well. You don't have to scroll. You could also use the plus and the minus 
keys to get around. I don't know why you do that when this nice little wheel is right here. Uh, but let's make a brand new folder, which is going to hold our project file. So there's a button right here. It says new folder. Click that. And let's write a, we'll just use today's date, which is 1 21 21 and click do it and that locks it in and so the next thing is well what happened we're we're in the SD card where's all the files what has happened well what's happened is we have created the folder 12121 and we're inside of that empty folder if you want to know where you are you have to look up here and it says SD card forward slash 12121 and that's the folder we just made if you want to go up a level where we were before, there's a folder with an up arrow. Just click that, and now we can scroll back down through here. But let's go to 12121, and let's double click to open that because we need to put something in there. Now let's save our project file in the, in the folder we just made. So let's give it a title, and this is our project. So I'm going to just call it, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call mine 121. 21. Oops, I messed that up. And that's what I mean. This thing, you can't you can't go super fast with this. At least I can't. Because it misses. Okay, click do it. And that'll name, there's the file name of our project file. I don't see it anywhere in here yet. It's because we haven't saved it. So click save. And it takes you back to that weird kind of in-between land again. Um, it'd be nice if it just stayed there so you can see it. Well, how do we see and prove that we made it? You just have to go back to save as. That's the only way you can get back there. And then we're back to our cards again. There's internal SD. Uh, you can scroll down to 121. I still don't see the project file. That's because I have to open it. Double click it. And great. There it is. And we already opened it, but Let's say we didn't want to open that one. Let's go up a file. Let's say we wanted to open yesterday's from here. Click on 12021. Oh, look, there's a project file. There is no way to open this, which is absolutely ridiculous. Akai needs to fix that because that's stupid. It's a waste of time. So I can't do anything from here. So what can I do? Well, I can go back to home base. When in doubt, go to main. And at least we can see we loaded our brand new project file 12121. So how do I how do I go open 120 yesterday's project? How do I open that from here? Uh, well, you would think you'd be able to go to the folder, but that just takes us back to the same little weird in between land. And the only thing you can do is hit save as, and I can see the internal and the SD card. Um, I can see we want to save yesterday's file, 12021. I can double click to open. I can see it. I can click on it, but there's no way to open it. So it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so going to the folder will do nothing for opening new projects from the project window here. You actually, well, how do you do it then? You actually have to go to this browse button, which is probably our second most important button. If I hit browse, now we come to a new button. We're going to be using this browse area a lot. Uh, there's a places. Well, it's by default it's on content. And another thing, make sure it's actually on this little square. If for some reason it gets off here, things are going to be all messed up. You want to always be on that little square within a square button. If we go to places, and now we can see our card. There's the internal drive. There's the SD card. And our goal here was to open up yesterday's project, which was 12021. Now we can double click on that, or there's even an open button. That's a good sign. And now there's a load button. So finally, I can click load and we're loading yesterday's project. And I'll show you what today's project is going to actually sound like once this, uh, once this opens up. Uh, let's go back. Now we're in that weird place again. Go back to main. And you can see I loaded up 12021. Let me turn down the volume. I don't know how loud this is going to be. Hit play, and this is what we're actually going to be building today. It's a very simple little jam track. Okay? So great. How do you save this? Let's say I did some work on this and I want to save it. 
Uh, luckily, that's really easy. You have to, there's the save button, but you have to push, see the save is in salmon, and there's a, all these buttons have, they have double labels. There's a white label and a salmon label. To invoke the, the salmon color, you have to hold down the shift key and then push save. All right, so that saved the project. But let's go open our brand new project. How do we do that? Remember, you can't hit that button. Well, what, what, let's, let's back up a sec. What is that darn folder for then? That folder, the only good that is, is to create a new project file. So if I do want to create a brand new project file, that's where you go. I hit that. That takes us to that weird little in-between land. And there's the new button. And that will take us back to the original startup screen. And then we have the option to hit empty or we can hit empty project. I think I hit that empty last time. Let's just show you that. If I hit that, it also makes a brand new project for us, right? But we already made one for today. How do I find that? Well, I don't go to the folder. I have to go to browse and then I have to go to places and then I go to the SD card, scroll down, find today is the 21st, uh, double click that or I could have hit the open button and then it's already highlighted. There's only one file there. Hit load. And it's loaded. It doesn't tell you it's loaded. It's like what happened. To look, we just have to go back to home base to main. And now we can see 12121 is officially loaded. All right. So I hope that helps you, your ability to navigate this a little bit. This took me quite a while to figure out. Again, there's no manual for this. Uh, the Akai gives you a manual, but it's for the computer software. You can hook this to your computer, and then you can download a supposedly a more powerful uh, kind of a DAW type software. Uh, but who wants to do that? I mean, this is a I bought this to be a kind of a jam box where I could do a small gig with it, uh, or I can practice with it. Um, so there is nothing. Uh, there there's a couple YouTube videos for beginners, but there's not a good one that's going to show you exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so in the next part of the video, we're going to start laying down the drum track and we'll meet the sequence, the track, and the, and the program, uh, all these bars. All right, in this section, we're going to finally start to put in a drum track. Basically, I'm going to select a drum kit and I'm going to use the one that comes with this machine so you don't have to buy anything. Um, so again, we've already created a project file. Uh, the project file has a sequence, track, and program section in it. So for me, my simple music, I mean, for most people, I think you're only going to use one sequence. It's really kind of the same as the project here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is name that. Let's name the sequence, and we're going to call it main. How do you name it? See the A button right here? Hit that and just type in main click do it. There we go. I mean, it hasn't really done anything, but at least we have our sequence. I could squeeze sque sequence two if you want to do a mixer. I don't know why you would even use sequence two because you're going to assign tracks to this main and there are, I think there's over a hundred tracks that you could sign, assign to the main. So that's plenty for me. Um, let's actually name this first track, the drum track. So same way, go to A, drum, do it. Okay, great. Let's play the drums. Nothing happened. How come? Well, we haven't loaded a drum program yet. So if you look down here in programs and you twirl the knob, there's nothing in here except program one, which is empty. Um, so the first step is to go bring in a drum program. Where do I go to do that? browse button. Hit the browse button. Now we're on places. That's not going to do us any good. But if we go to content, now we see some things. We see a drum pad here. So let's hit the drum pad. And here's a heads up on this. Make sure it's again on this square when you're viewing these menus in this section. Make sure it's not over here because that will actually show me the, the wave files that go into making things. 
So we want to see the finished kits and the finished bass kit and organ kit and drum kits. So you have to hit that square. It'll be there by default, but in case you mess that up. Um, so here's some kits. These come with the, the Akai MPC-1. And if you go down to Fat Kit, that's a pretty darn good, good kit. So let's load that up by hitting the load button. Okay, great. Um, I don't see anything again because it'd be nice if when you did an action, it'd be nice if it took you back to the home page or main, but it doesn't. So hit main <clears throat> and there we're back. Okay, let's play the drums. Nothing. What's going on? Uh, well, we have to look under here for the for the program we just loaded. It's not program one, but there's the fat kit. Okay. So let me show you another problem or just let me explain these tracks how they work. So we can look for things. Drum tracks are under this same little square with these four squares within a square. But there's also a plug-in option. So you can look for plug-in programs. I'll show you a bass plug-in that comes with this which is quite lame but I'll show you anyway. There's also a little keyboard here uh, which is very there's some very powerful programs we could load. Those are the MPC expansion packs we'll load there. Um, so, but for, and I mean, we can search th through this stuff. I don't see anything, but if I go to the drum and we can load more kits too, if we wanted, but there's the kit. Uh, so great. One of the problems I, I have with this, there's no way to lock this program to the drum track. So if you accidentally hit the, the plus key or the minus key, you might kind of discommunicate your to your program from your track, which is a bummer. Um, so you just have to be careful with the controls. But nevertheless, we have a acoustic kit, the fat kit assigned to our drum track. So now let me say a word about, about this drum pad. It's touch sensitive. So here's the kick. If I hit it a little bit, it's light. The harder I hit it, the more it goes. Now... It's not just me. Other people on YouTube have said this is a very stiff pad. You have to hit this thing pretty darn hard. There's a way to adjust the sensitivity, which there's other YouTube videos on that. I adjusted this to the most sensitive. And then I used this button right here. It's called full level. If you click that, you can hit it really light. And it goes full power every time. Okay, um, so that's great. If you don't, for whatever reason, you don't want every every strike of the pad generating a full power note, there's a half power, it's in salmon. So I could actually hit shift, push and hold shift, and hit this button again, and now I'm at half level. And it's not as loud. I like full, so I'm going to go back to there. Um, all right, so with that said, I think we're ready to to record our first drum sound. Or, and I'm going to put this together. This is a slow blues, so I'm going to put it together with... I'm just going to put a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat, an open hi-hat. All right, so let's put in our drum track. But, but, but before we do that, I better explain a little bit about the main sequence. So let's go through this because we need to get ready to record. Uh, there's a beats per minute. Uh, Texas Flood is 50 beats per minute. So it's down quite a bit. Just turn the wheel, go down to 50. Right? There's also a bar button. If I click on that, I can change the amount of bars I want to record. Um, I'm just going to record in one bar because it's such a simple drum beat. I'm going to record it, simply get it perfect, and I'm going to copy it 12 times. That's the way to do it, and I can spice it up as I go along. There's also a very powerful looper right here. Uh, let me actually turn this up to four bars for right now. Um, you can see that the looper was going to start at the first bar. When it comes to the end of the fourth bar, it's going to loop smoothly back together. I can turn it off by hitting it like that. This is going to come in handy when I want to put some accentuations at the end of the fourth bar. Um, I'm a guitar player. I like to know when I'm at and I'm jamming. I like to know where the end of the fourth bar is because the key is about to change there. 
All right, but that's the looper. Transpose we'll talk about when we talk about the bass. You can change keys. The drums don't care what key you're in. The other important thing is this little metronome. It's a little triangle here with a line through it. So here's the metronome. Uh, there is a three-click count in that you can't change, or I haven't figured out a way to change it. Uh, so right now it's set to give you a three-click count in only on record. You can change that to record and play. Might come back to that when I practice a little uh, to warm up. Um, but then enable. So this is going the click count, and every beat is going to there's going to be a click on every beat. I think you can control how the clicks are actually placed, uh, but I would leave it at at one four four is the classic. You know, like your foot tapping on the stage. Um, I could also enable it for play if I wanted, but don't really need to do that. I just need it going when we're recording. Down here's the sounds. You can have different types. Let's actually hit play and we can listen to these. If I enable it during play, we can hear we can hear these go. So there's a side stick. Uh, oops. There's a different type of side stick. It's a clap. So you can whatever you, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, I like the side stick. The outputs, don't worry about that. That's going out of the mains. I guess you could route those to your headphones if you wanted. i just leave them the mains. And then this is the volume. It's kind of weird. You have to go di drag diagonally to change the volume. So that's a little bizarre. All right, let's hit close. So now we got the metronome going. Let's get ready now to record something. But we better talk about these buttons here uh, first. So stop, play. I mean, self-explanatory. So record versus overdub. When you, If you want to record a brand new track and you want everything erased, starting from scratch, use the record button. If I hit record, you'll see record and play flashes. It's getting ready. When I hit play, I'll get a three-click count in, and I'm off recording. So if I've recorded something and it's a keeper, but I want to record the next part, then always hit overdub. If I hit overdub, play and start, it'll record again, but it'll record over the top of the last thing that you saved. We'll talk about the undo function as we go and the erase as we go. We'll talk about timing correct. I'm going to screw something up so I, so I can show you timing correct. Okay, we're back. We're ready to record our first kick drum. But remember I said I'm going to just, I'm not going to record four bars. I'm just going to record one bar. And then we can copy that to make it really simple. Um, I'm also going to check my metronome to see what's going on here. Uh, I should be getting a record in, or a count in during record. Uh, and it's enabled during, oh, it's because it's enabled only during play. That's why it was messing up in the last section. So we want it enabled during chord, and we want the count in during record. Now we're all set, hit close. All right, so I'm going to start by putting in the open hi-hat. Uh, let me just start play so I can practice just a little bit. So I should hear, although remember the metronome, let's go back to the metronome. I turned it off during play. So let's go record and play. Now let's hit close. Now it should work while I practice and get ready. All right, so there's the beat one, two, three. And look at this. So this will tell you what bar you're in, and it'll tell you there's four beats per bar. Um, if I had, let's put six bars in there. See how that counts the bar? And there's four beats, three or third bar, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, fourth bar. So hopefully you understand that kind of stuff, because I'm not going to go into that any more than that. Um, so let's put let's put this back to one bar. We're looping, the looper's on. Um, great. I want to practice, so let's hit play. I want to get my my timing so I don't mess it up too bad. So one. Blues has a triplet feel to it, so this is a, a 
Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I got it. So now I'm ready to, I might actually turn that up a little bit. I'm ready to go. So let's hit record. This is the first take. I could have hit overdub too. It doesn't matter. Hit play and I should get a three click count in one, two, three. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. What in the world has happened? This drove me crazy. So I finally figured out TC is time correct. Let's go look at that screen. By default, it's set to 1 16th notes, which is fine. And I'm not going to explain. You should know what quarter notes, eight notes, 1 16, 1 32nd. You should know what that stuff is. Um, but this is a kind of a four to the floor, like the metronome. It's a steady beat. It's not a galloping triplet beat. To get the galloping triplet beat, I initially hit off. And that time that turned off timing correct. And what is timing correct? What that means is when you're manually hitting in notes, if you're off a little, the computer will grab your note and throw it back on track. And because this is not in triplets, it's throwing it into a four on the floor type pattern and messing it up. So you can get rid of it by hitting that. But by mistake, I actually hit the T button, and I noticed that all the all the timings got a T after that. So I went back to one sixteenth, and sure enough, now it's going to be you can do blues and triplet feel to this. There's a swing button here that it doesn't do it. It doesn't give you a real triplet feel. So leave that at fifty. Let's click do it. Now we're in the triplet mode, and let's uh, let's try to repeat. Uh, and if I hit play, how do we get rid of that, that mess? Well, there's two ways. We could hit the undo, but that might undo my triplets that I just set. We can just hit record, and it'll race right over that. So that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. One, two, three. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. I missed the last note on purpose. Let's see how it fixed it. Great, I'm going to keep that take. And I'm going to show you something really cool. Let's go fix that. So just hit play. And let's go to this little hashtag right here. See it? This is the grid, and it's really, really powerful. It shows me exactly where my open hi-hat hits are, where the notes are. And as you can see, there's the playhead the white line, you can see I'm missing one right there. So let's just add one, and you can add it right in the play mode. So let's talk about this grid. There's four controls. Uh, it's by default on this little magnifying glass, so you can't mess anything up here, but I can sure blow it up, and I can drag it around, and I can see the problem needs to go right there. How do I put a new note there? All I do is go to the pencil, and all I do is put my finger there. And it makes it bigger. I'm not sure why it does that. But there, the problem is fixed. So let me show you what else I can do. Let's, let me show you how to drag this. So this little square button here, I can grab it and drag it around. Right? So if I want to drag it back in the right place, I can put it back there. Right? If I want to create maybe a something to kick down here, I can put notes in there. Let's get rid of those by hitting the eraser and just erasing them. So there we go. All right, now let's put in the kick and snare. So Texas Flood, it's pretty simple. Actually, it goes kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, and that's about all there is to it. So let's overdub. Don't hit record or you'll erase everything. Overdub, give me that three count in. One, two, three. Kick, kick, snare. Kick, kick, snare. Right. 
All right, that's all there is to that. Um, let me show you the erase function while we're here. Let's say I don't like that. I like the snare, but I don't like the kick. I can just hold the erase down and hold down the kick whenever I want to erase something. Let's say I just want to erase that that second, this one right here. One bar is good, so I'm missing one. Then I can put it in, I just re-hit it. So that's a nice handy tool. Plus, I don't have to be in play either to do that. If I or the I don't have to be in the record mode. If I just hit play, I can also hit erase and delete some of those. I can delete all of them if I want. So all we have left is the snare. I can't put them in though, because it's not recording. But I could put them in without recording by going to the hashtag. Um, let me go to the dragging tool. Did I show you the race tool? I don't think I did. But there's kick A01. That's that's the pad there. So it should go kick kick. So I think it, let's put the pencil tool in. I think it goes kick kick would be here. It goes there and there. Nope, let's drag it a little closer. Now I might not be able to put it in like this. Nope. So it doesn't have that triple feel to it. I can hit undo. Undo the last move. Undo the last move. So I'm going to have to overdub and hit that in. Just curious where it will put it. Start at one. It might be four this time. Three, four. Yep. So you hear the four count in, sometimes it freaks out and it counts four instead of three. Oh, that was my fault. Was that my fault? Let's undo that. Let's see if I can put it in by the hashtag, by the pencil. Where was it, right there? Oh yeah, it was just my fault. How do I fix that? Get the, the nudge tool, that little square, and now I can drag it. I can drag it wherever. Is that right? Nope. One more this way. That should be right. All right, awesome. So we have that in now. Let's go back to home base. Uh, let's duplicate this now. So how do I duplicate it? Go to the little pencil here. This is a powerful menu. So we can erase the track. We can clear the track and just make it completely non-existent. I can delete individual bars or I can double the length of the bar. So if I hit this arrow, I go back. So we have one bar. Hit the pencil again. So one times two is two. I just created made it two bars and I recorded all the stuff it just doubled the track so I can let's go back and double the two bars so two bars the times two button two times two is four bars see how that works and I'm going to stop right there uh, because at, as I said at the beginning I want to make a sign while I'm jamming out I want to know when I'm at the end of the fourth bar because I know then that the key is in blues is usually going to change. So I'm just going to put a and a in there. All right, so let's let's just lay that down real quick. Overdub, don't hit the recorder, you'll erase everything. And let's do the count. It should be three, maybe four. It'll be three this time, two, three. All right, there we are. So I'm on bar one. I want to be on bar four. I don't want to listen to this. This little second bar down, I can, in record or play, I can whip the playhead back and forth. So this is a handy little thing here because I know I want to record, I want to put my little, my little accentuation, 
I want it in the fourth bar, the fourth beat. I know exactly where it's going. So there's no sense of just waiting for it to come around. I can loop the fourth bar by hitting start of the loop area and let's turn that to four. And now I can zip up to four. I could have waited until it got there, but now watch, it's gonna loop around the fourth bar. See that? And it's gonna, it's this fourth beat I wanna put in. So let's put it in. Three. And let's let's add a little snare. Let's add this one in here. Okay. Great. Stop it. Um, and let's put this. Remember to put this back to zero. It doesn't. When you record, it doesn't always go back to zero. So you have to you have to watch this loop function. Whoops. Okay, so now I'm looping the four bars, and when it comes to four, you'll hear that little accentuation I put there. Awesome. All right, now that we got that in, let's make a 12-bar blues out of this. Okay, how do I do? Well, we just go back to the times two button. All right, I have four bars, times two is eight bars. Don't believe me? I can I can hit the main button too. Main will always take you to home base. So yeah, I got eight bars. Let's double that again. Eight times two. Uh oh, that's too many bars, isn't it? That's sixteen bars. Now what do we do? Let's delete those extra bars. Go to pencil, delete bars. Make sure you're in the main sequence, which is the only sequence we have. What's the first bar you want to delete? I want to delete bar 12. Is that right? No. That's part. This is a 12 bar blues. I want to delete bar 13. What's the last bar you want to delete? I want to delete everything past 13. So 13, 14, 15, and 16 will be deleted when I click do it. All right. Let's go check and see if we have our 12 bar blues. Let's hit play. We absolutely do. There's our 12 bar blues. Um, let's see if it, we're on a third bar. Let's zip all the way to the end. Twelfth bar. Let's see if it turns around. Okay, great. Now let me show you another trick. These are called Q knobs, I think. I showed you the second one. How we can speed around. The first one will make the drums, whatever tr whatever track is selected, this will go to is the volume for it. So I can turn it way down. I can turn it way up uh, right there. All right, what else do I need to show you? Well, how about if we want to send this to a digital mixer, but we want to, we want to kind, of, kind of modify the members of the kit, like that hi-hat, that open hi-hat is, uh, is way too loud. So how do I do that? So for drums, there's a very handy little button called Track Mix in Salmon. So if I click Shift, Track Mix, and hit Play, you can see the members of the kit. There's, there's the kick. If I touch on the kick, I can control the volume of that kick. I can turn it off. Right? Uh, the metronome is still going. Let's, let's go. How do you shut that off? Let's go shut that off. We'll go back to home base, metronome, and let's. we don't need it on when we're playing anymore. So now it's only going to come on when we record. Click close, so that's gone. How do I get back to the place where I can control the members of the drum kit? You remember? Shift, track pad, or pad mix, sorry, pad mix. Okay, where's that annoying open hi-hat? Right there. Let's click on that. Let's turn that thing way down. Let's turn it off for a second. Great. Let's just put that where it's supposed to be. I mean, it's to taste, right? However you want it. That seems a little more reasonable to me. Um, now, let me show you a 
gremlin, or let me show you a real problem. This took me an hour to figure out. I accidentally hit the solo button once. And I was on the kick and it was gone. And I, I ended up at main and my kick was gone. My snare is gone too. It's like, what happened? And I looked at the other place you can control the sound of all the tracks, like this triple bar here. I can also control the sound of the tracks by hitting level. I can turn them off. But I'm like, where is my kick and my snare? Another place I can control the main mix is to go to track mix, above pad mix, track mix. So I can also, here's the acoustic kit, I can control the kit. But there's no, the mute is not on. There's no indication that I muted anything. So you have to go back to the scene of the crime. The scene of the crime or the screw up was pad mix. If I hit pad mix, holy smokes, everything, all this stuff is muted. I don't even know how that happened. So I can start unmuting stuff. I know I need to unmute my, my kick. Wow, what? I don't even know what I did there. How did I get those all unmuted? Oh, you know what? You see what happened? When I was on acoustic, I hit the solo button. So there's the rest of the stuff. I tried to hit mute. See how I muted that? So watch out for these buttons. Let's go back to home base. Let me show you another trick. I kind of showed you, but let's do it official. Let's hit play. Uh, what happened to our hi-hat? We got to go back to the scene of the crime. I guess I didn't hit it, so. Yeah, it's still muted. So go back to that and hit unmute it. And let's pull that. It still sounds loud to me. All right. Let's go back to the main. And again, I showed you this a second, but let me just make it official. What if, well, no, you know what? I'll, when I put the bass in, I'll show you how you can adjust all the tracks together. Uh, that's just hitting track mix or this third bar here. Because there's going to be a bass and a keyboard, or there's going to be a bass and a keyboard track, just like there's a drum track. And you can control the sound of all these tracks right here. Uh, you can transpose the track right here. Uh, you can pan the track to the left and right. I only, I'm only mono to the left but you can do pan here. So this uh, track mix is, or this little triple horizontal bars is a handy function as well. All right, let's go back to home base. I think we're good, right? We got our drum track down. All right, let's turn this off. And that pretty much does it. And I mean, you can, you can keep overdubbing and adding to make give it more nuance, but I think you got the idea. So let's go on and lay down a bass track now. So to lay down a bass track, well, we need to first make a bass track because we have a drum track. So let's go to an empty track and let's name it bass. So click, how do you name it? A button. Okay, we'll name it bass. Click do it. Okay, great. Um, and now we need to assign a program to the bass. So can we assign this one? No, the drums are still here. Uh, is there a bass program? No. We can look under plugins. No, we can look under this little keyboard. Those are MPC expansions. No. So we have to go load one. Where do we go? Browse. Right? We did drums right here. I mean, we go to places. There's nothing there for places. Uh, but we could go to content here. Um, and we can go to well, let's, let me show you what comes with the MP3. Uh, it's terrible, but I'll show you anyway. Uh, there is a baseline right here. So if I click on the baseline and click load, it loads this baseline. So let's go look for it. So back to programs. And it's not under here. It's not even named. It's actually, a, uh, you have to experiment to find it. It's actually under this plugin. Uh, and it's just called plugin number one. And if I play it, nothing, what happened? Nothing. So here's a tip. 
This is for drums. You can't play this thing right now for bass. To play the bass line or a keys, you have to go into notes. So that's an really important button. And it's salmon, so I have to hold down shift and notes. And now I can see this bass track. So here's the one. I mean, it's just terrible, I think. I'm, not, I'm gonna go over this more here in a second, but let's just get rid of this. So let's go back to browse and let's find a real bass program. I had to buy this. Now put the name of the website, but it's so easy. You just pay a nominal fee for it. And you download it and you put it on your SD card. It tells you exactly what folder to put it in. Uh, and then you're ready to go. It lives under expansion. So let's look under the expansions tab. And actually, you can download these expansions, the MPC-1 expansions, uh, from Akai by registering the product. If you register, it'll give you permission to go to a website. It's kind of a pain, but I was able to download these. And it's got some, some really loud programs here. Um, but yeah, but here, here's the electric bass. So there's what the first one I bought. So if I go to that, we can see we got some basses here. And let's just use the cutlass clean, how about? So let's load that one up and see how that sounds. And you can see it's already loading or loading a lot more. There's a lot more to it. Go back to main and now let's look under plugins for it. Nothing there. That's because it's not a plugin. It's actually under this keyboard icon. Well, there's two. There's none to. Oh, there's the clean bass right there. The cutlass bass clean. Let's play it. How come nothing's happening? Because you need to go to notes. Press shift, notes. And now here we go. Much better. Now I can control the volume here if I want on this top button. All right, so awesome, that'll work. Let's go through this a little bit. So when chromatic is pushed, it shows you the chromatic members of the scale, uh, which is very nice. If you hit notes, it just shows you the root notes, like a G. So it gives you a bigger uh, platform to play with, but you're missing some of the notes that you need. Um, if you go to chords, it sounds terrible with the bass. But that sounds pretty good with the keys when we come to those. So just keep it in chromatic. You can set the key, uh, so we could do it in A or whatever. Um, it's in G right now, but let me show you the key of this thing. Uh, this, the root, the bottom root note, like the one chord of a one, four, five blues will always be here. And you should always set that to the lowest possible octave. Here's the octave. Uh, so I'm going to turn it down to zero and see nothing happens because I'm I'm too low. I have to go up to one and now at least the one will sound good. There's the four. There's the five chord. So that sounds pretty good. Okay. If I go up to like five, the one chord, well, it's even too high for five. It doesn't even work. So you have to be in range. You have to search for that range just like I said. Uh, and that'll work there. Okay, and I'm going to actually record it in G. But let's let's say that let's go up to D and see what happens. So what about in D? There's the one. There's the four. Five is. See, it's getting kind of high. Too high for a bass. So I didn't follow my rule. On the one, I want to make it as low as possible so we can go in the next octave under. Still works. How about if I go to zero? That's too low. So that would be the correct, uh, the correct octave to choose. Because there's the five sounds better. It's not so high, and there's the four. All right. But I actually want to record this, record this in D or in G, which is a great key. Okay, so we're all set up. Let's record our bass line. Now, you can't go back to home base to record the bass line because the pads don't work. So you have to record through notes. So back to shift and notes. 
So now we're at the mercy of our counter to know where the heck we are here. And I could piece this together through the grid function, but it's too hard. It's better to just just do a full take, all 12 bar blue, all 12 bars. Um, that's the way I do it. If you had patience, you could slowly put it in through that same grid function. Um, but I'd rather just put it in. So make sure you hit overdub. It'll snap when you hit record. See, we're up here in the fourth of uh, the eighth bar. Um, it'll snap it back to zero. Let me show you one more thing, though. Make darn sure that we're started here, because if you're not looping at one, uh, if let's say I'm looping at 9, 10, 11, 12, that's where you'll record. And you don't see that when you're on the notes menu. So we're okay. But I've had that happen, screw up before too. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's hit, give us a three, maybe four, but should be a three. One, two, three. Whoa, what happened? Uh, let's see. What did happen? I actually have no idea what happened. But let's erase that silliness for sure. Um, that's probably because I jumped over here. This thing, as I said, it definitely has some gremlins in it. And we're looped okay. Okay, it should be working. So let's go back to... Let's see, I'm on base. Okay, let's go try it. Again, notes. Oh, you see what happened? We're at G0. I forgot to set my octave. It's too low. Okay, so I had, there's, there's the, correct, the correct octave for that. So good lesson there. Another pitfall. So let's go overdub. I hope I recorded it. I think I or erased it. And let's hit play start. One, two, Okay, I screwed it up on purpose. On the turnaround, I screwed up the four. So that would probably be like the 10th bar. Let's, I'm still in record. Let's speed ahead and see, because I know where I messed up. Right there, ninth, bo ninth bar, I messed up the, looks like the third B. Ninth bar, right there, that's the wrong note. So let's erase that. Ninth bar, third beat. So let's erase that. Hold down the erase, and we'll just erase. I can hold it down any time because it's. I shouldn't have hit that note. It's just the wrong note. So that's gone. Okay, and now let's just put in what's supposed to be there. And there I fixed it. Let's go back and listen to make sure. Ninth bar, third, third beat, fine now. Okay, great. So now we got our bass guitar. Let's go back to home bass. And now let's say we want to mess with the volumes of these things. Well, there's two places I showed you before to mess with the overall volume. Uh, we can go to the the hashtag here. Oh, even before, sorry, before I do that, let's go to the hashtag. I said that a Freudian slip because I wanted to show the, the hashtag. Hit play, and here's another bug in the Akai MP, MPC1. I don't see anything. 
So I've learned if you hit the up arrow and then go back to the hashtag, there's our baseline. And we can go, the same tools work. Um, there's the moving tool and the shrinking and expanding tool. There's what the whole bass track looks like. And you can erase, you can use the eraser, you can use the pencil, you could do whatever you want. So I could have made the correction here as well, but for me it's just easier to punch it in and out. Okay, let's go back to home base. Let's manipulate the sounds. I think that bass is a little loud. So I can go to this little three, these three bars, these three horizontal bars. Uh, there's drums, I can go to bass. I can go to the sound of the bass, and now I can turn them down. Turn them off if I want. I could do whatever I want to them. Okay. I actually like the bass loud. I can also mix them. I don't really like this place though. Let's go back to home bass. I prefer to go to track mix. Uh, and you can also see the bass right here. So I can control it like that. I can solo it and turn off everything else. Remember, if you, if you leave that, you might get lost. If I go back to home base, it's like, where's my drum kit? It doesn't indicate that everything's muted, uh, which is annoying. Even if I go to track mix, you would think that shows everything. It doesn't show that anything's muted. So that's annoying. It would be nice if they fixed that. You have to go back to the scene of the crime, and the scene of the crime was track pad mix. And there I can see it soloed. Where's the other place I said we can control? We can control all the track sounds and mix those? Um, right here. And here, it doesn't even show. Oh, it does show it's muted there. The drums are muted. So I could turn it off there. Will it let me? No, it won't let me. At least it shows me. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't seem to show me. So you still have to go back to the scene of the crime, which was the track mix to fix, uh, to fix the solo. Oh, it's because the solo was on. Why it didn't? Um, so now everything should come back okay. Although I don't hear the drums. Oh, because I was on. Let's go look. The acoustic kit is muted, uh, muted too. So let's go see what happened to that. You see how this can be drive you absolutely crazy? Did I hit something here? It looks like it's muted there. There we go. So I had to fix it in two places. I wonder what happens if I hit solo. And then I go back to track mix well, at least it shows it's soloed so it looks like I can fix it there as well so anyway good luck with that just be be careful remember that is can be a landmine of problems um, okay great so I think that's pretty much it for the bass section uh, how about let's put it in the keyboard now all right let's put it in the keyboard so we need a new track for it I'm going to go a little faster because you guys are experts. Oh, you know what? I didn't save it. How do I save it? I showed you that way back at the beginning. Let's not lose our work. Hit shift, hold it down, save button. And it's saving. When we put the keyboard in, it's going to be an organ, another MPC expansion pack that I bought. Um, it's going to be almost exactly the same as putting in the bass. So, okay, it's saved. So the first thing we need to do is make a new track, find a free track. Um, let's see, track one was the drum, track two is the bass, track three is free. So name it by hitting the A button. So this will be, uh, we'll call it the organ. Great, hit do it. Oops, see how I double hit it? I hit solo, that would have been a disaster. Um, okay, great. Uh, there's nothing there. That's because we need to load the organ program. Go to Browse, and if wherever you are, you have to go to Expansions. And I bought this one right down here. It says Vintage Organs. And you can play with the ones that come with the kit. I gave up. I couldn't find one I liked. 
They're all really funky and dance music and hip hop. I just want a good old fashioned vintage organ. So I had to buy it. And we can listen to some of these. Oh, here's a good landmine right here. It's like, where are my darn bass programs? All I see are the wave files that created the bass program. It's because I'm not on this little square right there. The bass pro, the drum kits, the bass kit, I can call it because it's made up of wave files. And the organ kit, it's these are labeled .xpm. So to see .xpm, you have to be on the little, the four squares put in a square form. So let's listen. We can listen to some of these. Okay, I actually like one that's called Rock Organ right here, and it does have a very long and in long introduction to it. I don't know what that's about, but let's hit load and load it up while it's playing. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to main and let's look for it. So is it under plugin? No. Um, it's certainly not under drums. I mean, there's our drum kit still. But it is under the keyboard, and there's the rock organ right there. It doesn't play. How come? Because we're not under notes. Just like the bass, we have to hold shift down and then click notes while we're holding that down. And there we go. There's the key, and the same deal. Now the chords, if you hit on a chromatic chord, you can play the one, four, and the five. There's the one. I can turn that up a little, I think. Five, four, one. So I could just put those chords in if I want. I'm gonna make it a little more fancy. Uh, but the same rules apply with regard to the octave. Um, so you want the lowest octave here possible. That's the one chord. Um, and let's turn it down, turning the wheel down to zero, it's too low. So if we're in the key of G, we'll keep it there. All right, so let's record. So it's the same principle. Um, you can go back here and just make sure the looper isn't, isn't set. Make sure the loop is either is looping from bar 1 to 12. The, everything is the same, I mean, we're good to go. So let's go back to notes, hold down shift, and let's put overdub, we don't want to erase everything. And then let's hit play start, it'll give us a three click count in. Might be four this time, three, four, no, it was three. Let me start it over. If you push, when you have overdub, when you push play and start, if the first count in, the first click is almost instantaneous, it's going to be a four count in. Most of the time it's a three count in beat, but it definitely has a bug in it. One, two, three. I screw that up. How do we get rid of that? Start over. Hit undo. That'll take it all away. Just let me hit play to make sure it's gone. Now I have to go back to zero and make sure I, that's gone. Now, the reason I gave these this keypad uh, a B B minus C plus is because of this organ. It's finicky. If you don't hit right in the center of the keys, it'll miss notes. And I don't know if that's the program's fault or the MPC-1's fault, but there's you have to be careful with that. Let's try it again. One, two, three.
right, let's, let's see if we got it. And sometimes it misses that first note, but it's really there. I have to turn it back to one. So I, I missed a note somewhere. Let's see where I missed that. Let's see what bar it is. And we'll fix it. We're at the sixth bar. Nothing yet. Seventh bar. I know I missed it somewhere. I think it must be the tenth bar, maybe. It was the tenth bar. That's it. Tenth bar, second beat. Let's confirm it. I just have to hit that E2 right there. So let's stop it. I mean, I could go back to the grid to do that, but let's just overdub it in there. If I miss it, then I can erase it without messing everything up. So, 10th uh, bar, second beat, right? Let's speed ahead. Now I'm just watching this. Here comes the 10th bar. All right, got it. So here we go. Pretty simple. Let's make sure I got it. There's the five. The four is where it was messed up. Great. I'm going to turn the master volume down here. All right. So that's about it. I can go back to home base. Um, we can save it too. Let's save it. Better do that. It's so easy though. Hold down shift, hit save. So that's our project for the day. Um, great. That's about it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave comments down below. If I'm missing something or you know a better way to do something or you could help me, that would be awesome if you could write comments and help me below. If you have comment or questions, I'll, I can try to answer those. And... Great, we'll see you in the next video.